Hey gang, Aaron Fisher here. Welcome back to session three. Now, if you remember what we've done so far, we've taken a super economical technique of cutting the cards efficiently in a way that no one can notice, and we've built it in to the natural process of having a card selected and returned to the pack. So you have handled everything up until this point so naturally, so deceptively, so above suspicion that you are literally in the position and have created the soil where a genuine magical experience can now take place. And remember, from your position, the hard work is already completed, but from your audience's point of view, the trick hasn't even started yet. Only a few moments have passed since you had a card selected in the first place, and already we're at the fun part, the presentation. So you've had a card selected and returned to the deck in the fairest possible manner. So at that point, you can start the presentation, which goes something like this. I have to do a lot of listening when I'm doing magic for somebody. I have to listen to what they say, and I have to listen to what they feel. And if I do it hard enough, with enough concentration, I can sometimes pick up on thoughts and feelings people have that they don't even know that they're putting out. So I'm gonna show you these cards one at a time. And I'm not even gonna look at you, I'm gonna look away. And your job is just to let the cards float by without thinking anything at all. And then at some point, you're going to see your card. Now when you see your card, don't change your body or your face or any of your physicality at all. Just think the word stop. You don't have to shout it in your head, just whisper it. Think stop. Now you don't have to use those exact words. And in fact, after you learn how to do this trick, it's very likely that you'll want to change the words to suit your own energy and your own personality. But think, as you look at the trick, why I use the words that I do. Presentation is really important to the finished product of the magic. Presentation heightens, clarifies, and crafts, and actually to a very large extent, it creates the effect in the mind of the audience. The details are what make the actual effect happen. So be sure when you present the trick not to skip the details that count. She shouldn't let me know what she's thinking. She needs to know that I'm not going to look at the cards. Right? Remember, if you don't tell the audience exactly what to focus on, you're letting them decide all by themselves what to focus on. And if they're left to their own devices, it's very likely that they'll be focusing on things you don't want them to focus on, namely the method. Now the best way to learn how to take this kind of thinking and put it into your own work all the time is to for the moment take the presentation I've given you and use it pretty much exactly, at least the same details. And then pay attention to what your audience takes away from those details, what they talk about later when they tell you about, what they remember, what they share with their other friends when they retell the story and reframe it. And that process, if you pay attention to it, will really begin to give you a real understanding of exactly how important these presentational details are to creating the magical effects that we desire. All right, a little housekeeping here. Your card is somewhere near the middle of the deck underneath a key card. Now, we all know how the key card works and we all know that it's a really great concept, right? The audience can cut the deck of cards as many times as they like and you can deal through the cards and eventually you will come to the key card and you will find the selection. Now, beginners and kids, and when we first start get started in magic, we all run into the same problem. It works, it's supernatural doesn't require any effort at all, except you can sometimes end up dealing through like 48 or nine cards, waiting to find the card. And more importantly than even exposing the method, it's boring. We're not trying to create just natural, we're trying to create entertainment that seems and feels natural. And that's a different thing. So we're going to create the illusion of natural that's slightly more entertaining. And all we have to do to do that is kick those cards back to overhand position and shuffle off some of the cards, just some of the cards, above the key card, right? Now, how many cards above the key card do you wanna shuffle off? Well, that's up to you as long as you don't go past it. If you shuffle off more cards than the key card, you're sunk and there's nothing we can do to help you. But beyond that, I like anywhere between five and 15 cards above the key card. Now, one of the things that makes this trick so awesome and powerful in performance is that you don't really know when the card's coming. I mean, you have the general idea, you know within several cards you're gonna see it, but really, at the moment you see your key card, I sort of guarantee that you're going to be as surprised as anybody else. And that genuine response to that happening in the moment 
is a lot of what conveys this powerful effect and, and sort of creates that experience in the mind of the audience. Be prepared to mess that up a few times before you put it together. Don't feel bad about it, it's completely normal. I've messed it up before, a lot of my students mess it up. I, I think everything in magic is easy once you mess it up enough times to understand how it really works. So I'm gonna tell you now how to make sure that you won't mess it up no matter what happens. Um, you've placed the card right in the deck and the key card goes on top with however many cards that is. Now at that point, you wanna make your best guess as to how many cards that is. In this case, I'm gonna say it's about 26. Now you don't have to have a good guess and you don't have to be right, but if you don't wanna make sure you'll never mess this up, just make a guess, in this case, 26. So now I know that I can shuffle off 15 cards easy and still be nowhere near my selection. So I can do that, and I don't even have to get this right, but I just need to give it my best shot, right? And now I know somewhere between 10 and 20 cards, I'm gonna be running in to the selection. Uh, I know that shouldn't be necessary, and I know that, you know, that's one of those things imagine you go, ah, just shuffle off a few cards and, and get rid of some. But in my experience, this is a really important rule to figure out. Uh, there's nothing in magic, nothing in magic, that is easy to do and effortless until you've really taken the time to slow down and figure out exactly how it works in performance. So until you do that, uh, trust me, do it this way for the first 20 or so times you perform the effect, and after that, you literally won't have to give it thought ever again, no matter what trick you're using that idea in. Now you're ready to do the magic. Remember, during this entire sequence coming up, you're gonna turn your head pretty much as far as you can to the right, even a little bit more than is comfortable. That's important because A, everyone can see very clearly. You know, it's that heightened naturalness. It's natural, but more interesting, you're not looking and they can feel that tension and they're gonna remember that tension. And now you show the first card and you listen. You put all of the tension and focus as though you're listening to that card, trying to hear that thought. At that moment, you inhale, you lean forward and you build that tension. And then after a moment, relax, exhale and release and place the card off to the side like this. Remember, no one can stand to hold tension constantly. It's just like that floodlight going back and forth. After a moment of tension, you need a moment of release, and so does the audience. And of course, when you exhale, you relax, and the card crosses your gaze. And no one cares. It's not the selection. It's not important. You're not even thinking about it anymore. No one cares at all. You don't even care, unless of course it's your key card. At that point, things are gonna change. This is a super simple, lovely example of a concept that the misdirection master Tommy Wonder called the attention focus wave. On the inhale, you have the tension, the pressure, the focus. On the exhale, you relax and do the move as the card crosses your gaze. Of course, in this case, it's not even really a move. With this back and forth tension relaxation wave, you could literally deal through 50 cards of the deck before you found the key card without anyone noticing that 50 different times you secretly glimpsed a card. Notice that all the time and energy that you're placing into each potential moment of revelation puts a lot of time and space in between each one of these seemingly insignificant little moves, these glimpses. Sure, I know you've seen this trick before, and you know that most magicians prepare for this trick doing something like this. No time between each one. And you also probably know that most magicians who perform this way simply aren't very mystifying. So take the time right now before using crazy incredible slights to learn how to place a lot of time a lot of space a lot of interaction between each and every move no matter how insignificant it is once you become a master of that process you'll be able to take any well-designed slight and at least within the context of a well-designed trick 
turn it into something that's completely imperceptible and feels natural in every single way. Remember, during this process, all of your attention and focus should really just be on playing with the audience. At the end, that's all the finished product of a magic performance should really look like. Just listen and respond and play. When you do it, do it without any thought in your head except the audience and waiting for that card. Remember, you've worked really hard so that your technique and your misdirection and your trick structure and your presentation and your performance are all working together, supporting you right now so that in this moment, you can be a real magician. Just let those cards swing by and focus on the audience, focus on the magic. And at some point in this process, something's gonna change. At some point, you're going to feel that key card come by. You're gonna know. Treat the next card just like it's every other card, except and you shouldn't even have to say anything. Your audience will rock back on her heels. You won't have to ask if that was her card, if that was her selection. Everyone's gonna look at her face and know that it was her selection. And remember, as a trick, yeah, you found a selected card, but the effect of this was far different. The effect was that you read this person's mind. Now we've gone as far as we can go together alone in preparing this effect. We've learned every single layer and put it all together as well as it can be prepared without the final element that we need to create real magic. So take what we've discussed and learned and practice it, study it, rehearse it, think about it. Because in our next session, all this kale for work goes right out the window. Next time, get ready to meet the audience. Becoming a real card magician is a fascinating journey that's guaranteed to teach you a great deal about yourself and about your hidden potential. Now that process can be a lot more fun, fast, and rewarding with regular help along the way from an experienced teacher. Why not come online now and tell me about you and your magic and I'll send you a free learning evaluation designed to help you assess your current progress, set meaningful goals, and accelerate your learning. Each response is personal and unique and designed to help you do better magic faster than ever before. So go to learncardtricksonline.com right now to get started. I'll see you there really, really soon. Thanks for watching.